In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from an okay mudding job to perfectly sanded, primed, and painted walls and ceilings. And we're gonna do it right now. In a recent video, I taped and mudded this little basement stairwell area. And in that video, I said that mudding wasn't my most favorite thing. If there's anything that I don't like more than mudding, it is sanding, but it is a very important step when you're trying to make perfectly smooth walls and ceilings. There are different types of finishes for walls and ceilings. There's textured, there's plaster, probably a bunch of different ones. If somebody tells you that they can mud your walls and your ceilings and not have to sand and they'll be perfectly smooth, they're either lying or they're not that good and it might look a little bit like a texture. So I'm not the best at mudding, but I am able to do it and I'm able to sand it and finish it so that it looks nice. And that's the whole point of this. I'm not trying to teach you how to be the most professional tape, taping and mudder, mudding and taper, taper wall finisher ever. I'm just trying to teach you how to be able to do it yourself and have a nice outcome at the end of the day. So let's get to it. My very first tip is to start from the bottom and work your way up. The ceiling is actually the hardest part because you're sanding like this if you're using a sand and sponge and getting up on a ladder and making sure that's good. I usually like to do the harder stuff first, but in this case, if you take a look here, I started this on purpose so you could see. Now I can't get in here and see what I have to sand and make nice against the floor. In my case, I'm not doing baseboard, but this can accumulate up to where you actually will need to sand it. If you look on the other side, I can see all this and I can start from here and work my way up. That way I know that this is done and as I'm working my way up, if it gets covered, that's no big deal. So that's my first tip. Start from the bottom and work your way up. And while we're here, let's start right here. Since I'm not doing baseboard, I'm going to start by scraping up all this along the bottom. I'm just going to use a chisel because that's going to make it go way quicker. And I actually have to sand this a little bit because all that's getting painted as well. I just scrape this up. You will probably not have to do this, although you will have to clean the mud off of your floor. And to be safe on a nice finished floor, you can use a wet sponge or just a wet paper towel and that'll work fine. So now that's all set and we'll start down here. Before you start sanding an entire room, it's a good idea to wear a mask. And if you can put up some plastic, shut the door. This dust is so fine, it gets everywhere. So if you want your significant other to be happy, take the steps to protect yourself and protect the rest of the house. I like to have multiple sanding devices on hand and a good place to start is something like a fine sanding sponge. This is fine or it's probably around 150 grit. I also like to use 220. Really, I have in the past used a 220 grit sanding sponge for an entire bedroom. If you have a lot of square foot to cover, you can use something like this. I have to change this out, but this is a drywall sander that goes on a sanding pole. I don't use it so much in the corners. You just got to be careful because this can pop and make a mark and you will be upset at yourself if that happens. Another tip for in the corners, if you have a sponge like this that has an edge like this and some angles, you can get into these corners and make those real nice. This one is obviously a little weathered, so we're not even gonna use that. If you don't have an angled one, you can cut it like I did here, and this has actually lasted a lot longer than that one. So that's what I'm gonna use to get right in those corners. I'm gonna start down here with a fine sanding sponge because there is a little bit of a hump right here and it kind of depends on how much you have to sand this is actually pretty coarse compared to a 220 so i'm going to switch between the two when i have like a big i'll say clump i'll use the fine and then when it's not as bad 
I'll use the 220. Yet another tip for you. A nice, big, bright light to highlight how bad you are at mudding. For instance, if you take a close look at this, it doesn't look too bad. But if you shine a giant light on it, it looks like my three-year-old did it. That's okay. That's what sanding's for. So I'm gonna start with the fine sanding sponge. The whole goal of this is to make the wall smooth. So let's try it. Look at that. Take my 220, and that didn't take long at all. So, that's it. And you might think that we could stop the video right here, but I have a lot more tips to share, so keep watching. Oh, I wanna show you an example in here of why I like using sponges that are angled like this. As I said, you can get in nice and tight here, like this, and then do the other side. And this is the hardest part in here. You really got to be careful and go in here and just try and make it smooth. At the end of all the sanding, once you clean everything up and before you prime and paint, I have seen a lot of people go in here and just use some caulking to make this perfect. That's not a bad idea at all. I want to show you an example of why I don't just use a square sponge. You might be thinking you can just use this in the corner. But if you're sanding like this, you can make the corner nice. But you can see what I just did is I made a nice line right here that looks terrible. So that's why I like using these angled ones and I'm careful and hopefully I didn't make it so that I hit the paper. That's okay. I might have to do a little more work in the corner, but make it smooth like something like that this area is perfect now just try not to go down so far that you hit the paper once you hit the paper stop immediately and you should be good to be able to paint it and cover it up and it should be okay if you hold the light directly towards what you're trying to sand i'm going to use this whole thing as an example it doesn't look that bad so what you have to do is hold it off to the side like this and it'll really highlight this and if you're able to use a nice bright light like this to look from the side to make it smooth as you're sanding you're never going to be able to see it with the natural light of the room unless the sun comes in and hits it at a certain point but that's the whole idea behind this is to make it perfect with this light so that it will always be perfect no matter what light is shining at it let's take this corner sand that down and then feather this edge and I'll hit this screw at the same time. And this is just to show you an example of about how long it takes. I'm gonna use just 220 and start here and work my way out. And make it nice. Be careful in the corner. A little spot right here. screw hole and that's pretty much it and you run your hand along here and you'll be able to feel it if it's got imperfections but that looks pretty good a little more work in the corner Nice. This is such a small area that I normally would just do all of this with a sanding sponge, but I wanna show you how this pole sander works and show you how to change out this paper. We'll call it paper. It's really a mesh, but you just loosen these up. Get rid of that. The reason this is a mesh is because it helps to kind of distribute the drywall dust and it doesn't really gum up like normal sandpaper would. Eventually, 
it looks like that. That's when you know it's time to change it out. Fold this over, kind of like an old school sanding block. Yeah, something like that. Cool. And this is the most aggressive I will go. You can get a machine that actually has a rotating sanding head and you can do an entire room. It has a vacuum attached to it. And that is super simple if you have the machine or if you want to rent it, but you got to be careful because you can just burn through the mud really quick and you can hit tape and you can get really frustrated after doing an entire room and you look close and you see a bunch of tape spots. If you're not experienced with it, you could make a mess. So this is all about how you can do this yourself with minimal tools. This is the most aggressive I will go. And I lost my painting pole. I have no idea where it went. I think I let somebody borrow it and I never got it back. So I'm gonna use a broom handle and I'm just gonna be really careful. I'll turn my light on so I can see. So when you're using a sanding pole like this, you don't wanna go straight on like this. Obviously this is good for hard to reach places like the ceiling, um, but the way to hold it is at an angle. So as an example, I'll put my hand right here uh, because you obviously you don't want to hit another wall as well. This is a really tight space, so that's why I don't want to use it. But I would start right here like this and just nice and easy start sanding. See, I just bumped the wall back here, but I didn't put a hole in it because my hand is there. And you can be careful and do the corners like this. And that's as far as I'm gonna go with that. The nice thing about this is it's wider, so it's gonna flatten the seam out a little more, taper it out nice. So I have my light set up here, and I'll show you as an example these spots right here. Take my sanding pole. And after a couple passes, it's completely gone. Now there are streaks in this, so I'm gonna hit everything with the 220, but this would take off the bulk of what you're trying to get off there. So if I hit this with my 220, it'll take away all these marks and I'm gonna taper this edge right here. And it's not gonna take much. Nice and quick. And then right here. Just like that. Next up, corner bead. I'm just jumping around here just so I can give you different examples and give you my tips. So from here to here, all you wanna do, this is 220. Get all the, the big stuff off of here. A little line right here. And then for the actual corner bead, it's okay that you're seeing metal. In fact, that is the whole point of it. That's gonna make a nice edge to paint. And if I turn the light on this side, I'll do the same thing. Here's a little bit of an abnormal situation. Typically, when you drywall and you do the mudding and taping, you don't have outlets or switches or anything like that in here, but I, didn't want to move it. I didn't want to take it out. I wanted to just keep it there. So I kind of made a mess. This stuff comes off really easily. I can just break it off like this, but what I'm going to do is take a plastic taping knife, just a small one, and just kind of clean this all up. The reason I'm using plastic might be obvious. If I miss and go in here to the hot side of this outlet, I won't get zapped. So just carefully clean all this up and then you can even clean up around the edge so you don't have to get too close. Definitely don't use a wet sponge to clean up this outlet. And if you're uncomfortable with this, you can turn the power off. Here's another abnormal situation. If you watched my last video, I know you're dying to see how this comes out because I had a lot of trouble right in this little area, uh, just a tight little corner. So let's see if we can make it look nice. So I'm gonna start with my chisel and clean up this stuff here. And then I'm gonna carefully chip this stuff off and right here, all the way. Okay. I'll try and get this clump right here. And this actually is definitely not straight. So 
I'm gonna very carefully use a chisel to try and take some of this mud out of here. I'm gonna use some sandpaper on my little special plastic tool that I used to actually mud this so I can get right in this corner here. I really hope you don't have to do this, but if you do, hope this helps. It's not bad. And actually, this might be really good for the corners. Hmm. Did I just discover a new cool tool? Maybe, let me know, what do you think? So those are my big tips for sanding and making the walls and ceiling perfectly smooth. Apply that to the entire thing. This little basement stairwell might take me an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So next tip, wear your mask, put on some headphones, listen to some music, and try not to go nuts. I'm gonna sand this out. Sometimes if you're careful and you got a big clump of stuff, you can take like this, a six inch tape and knife, just kind of carefully scrape it off. Like that, there was a big chunk there. I can sand the rest. Now don't go too far with these screw holes. There's still like a little circle like this left. That's fine, as long as you can't feel it. So I gotta be careful not to mess anything up. I've done everything up to where I need ladders. And I have my sweatshirt here so that when it leans against the wall, it doesn't mark it up, hopefully. Carefully there, because that is the only way to set the ladder up, unfortunately. And I am gonna use the sanding pole on the ceiling because it's kind of awkward. Okay, so this is why I hate this. <laughs> if you look, it's a mess. Um, but we're all sanded out. I went around real carefully with my bright light. I uh, got everything nice and smooth, all the corners nice and crisp. So now just gotta clean all this up before the wife gets home. Now your natural reaction is gonna be to wanna clean up the floor because there's piles of dust. But these walls have to be pretty dust free when you go to prime them and paint them because as you paint them or prime them, the dust will start sticking in your paintbrush and your roller and it'll leave clumps everywhere. So you need to get the dust off of here. What I like to do is I use a very soft paintbrush something like this. And I'm just gonna go along and wipe down everything like this. But what I figured out in the past couple years is to do that, but at the same time, instead of put, putting the dust on the floor, I'm gonna attach it to a shop vac attachment here. Do something like this. And that way, as I clean, the shop vac will clean up some of that dust and I'll start from the ceiling and work my way down, get all the walls and then, then do the floor. Now I'm just gonna use some wet paper towels to clean up this. And now that that dust is gone, I can see I have a little bit right here that doesn't look perfect. And you can actually use a wet sponge to sand this stuff, although I haven't had great luck with it. Um, but if you get good at it, sometimes it's even a better finish because it fills in all the imperfections. But just fix that and then I can easily clean up all of the stuff that I got on the floor here. Okay, maybe not easily. It's gonna take some effort. I think I need a screwdriver to get in there because it's a little tight. And I'll go around 
and just get off all this stuff. I'm gonna paint this, I'll probably paint it the wall color. A lot of it's gonna be covered up by shelving, but I might as well clean it up. And then there's the basement stairs that look like basement stairs. I don't know, should I paint them? Maybe, we'll see. One thing at a time, but I will clean up the handrail. So I have my painting clothes on. Always good to have painting clothes and I'm ready to prime. But first, before I do that, I made a little diagram here and I'm gonna write down where all the studs are because I'm doing shelving in here. And instead of using a stud finder and trying to find studs, if I measure where the screw holes are right now, I'll know exactly where they are and I'll have a lot easier of a time when I go to install everything. So I will do that, write it down here, then I'll get the priming. So now I have all my measurements for where my studs are. You might not understand this, but I do. And that's the important thing. If you do the same thing, just make sure you understand it. So when you go to actually find the studs, you can find them. In the past, I have used the paint and primer combined into one paint. A lot of companies are doing that now and it's okay. I've used it in a couple rooms, but just to be safe from here on out, I'm using something that is actually designed for this. It's designed to do the fresh drywall and joint compound kills PVA primer. It's water-based. It doesn't stink um, like other oil-based primers do. And if you're doing a glossy finish, it's not recommended for it, but I'm doing like an eggshell in here. So it's gonna work perfect for that. This goes on just like regular paint. You can spray it if you want. I'm gonna brush it and roll it. And then after two hours, I'll be able to paint this. So we'll start with this. Typically, you're not gonna have lights already installed, but I have mine. So I'm gonna take it out carefully. It's gonna snap on my fingers. I should be able to just let this hang. And I should be able to still turn it on. Cool, now I can go around this and not hit the light. So I already know that there's gonna be touch-ups, the primer highlights any places that need to be touched up. And then you do those touch-ups and sand them out and paint. I am painting this as well, so I'm not worried about getting this primer on it. Although I'm not gonna use this primer prime it, I'm gonna use an oil base because this is not made for stain blocking and I don't think it'll do a very good job on the raw wood here. So I can be nice and messy with this. So when you start to prime, you start to see stuff like this and this is what I was talking about that I'm gonna to have to touch up. That was filled with dust before so I couldn't tell they were there but now they're not, so I'm gonna have to touch them up. I'm landing on pretty thick in some spots to try and fill in some of the little pinholes. I'm gonna be priming all this wood too, painting that. Why not? Eventually, I don't know if I'm gonna do it right now, but. Well, really, you don't have to put primer on as thick as paint. I do it in the corners like that because it covers up a lot of the imperfections. It's like an extra layer of paint. Yeah, I'm gonna hit. I might have to do the top half first. That's how I do the corner bead. Just roll it this side, roll it that side, make sure it's a clean edge. If you have to, you can clean it up like this in spots. Looks good. So there's gonna be shelving going on top of this. I'm still gonna paint it, but I wanna prime it first. And before I prime it, I'm gonna sand it. For right now, I'm just gonna do this whole top and then this little piece right here. You can see there's some staining. Um, I want to hit that with oil-based primer. Um, so just this and this for now. I think I'm going to do this at a later time. Probably something with the stairs. For now, 
just this. I'm gonna use Zinser Cover Stain. This is low VOC, although it does stink pretty bad, but not as much as a lot of the oil-based primer. This is made for smoke damage and staining and it's good stuff. But it is oil-based, so I'm gonna paint all of this with this little brush because I hate cleaning brushes. So I'm just gonna throw this one away. Hate cleaning brushes that have oil base paint on them. Quick and dirty. Primer doesn't have to totally cover. Now I'm going to do some touch-ups and this all depends on how picky you want to get. If you want your walls to be absolutely perfect, you can spend all month in here. But to be honest with you, if I wasn't filming this, I would probably just paint right now. But I want to show you how to do this. There's different levels of drywall finishing from not even doing a tape coat and leaving the screws exposed, no joint compound, all the way up to making your walls look pristine. And I don't have to go crazy in here, but I wanna show you. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take some masking tape and I'm gonna put this on all of the touch-ups because the stuff that I'm gonna use cures very quickly and I, want, I don't wanna have to search for everything again. So I'm gonna go around with a light and hold it sideways against the wall and look for any imperfections. And I'm gonna be honest, I did a pretty good job on this because I'm not finding a lot, but there are some. So let me show you an example of a couple. So right here in the corner, you can see there's a little line right here. And then a couple of these bubbles that get exposed once all the dust is out of them. So I'll put a piece of tape right here. And then I'll move on. This stuff right here, is just some stuff that was in the primer that will actually, I'm gonna sand these walls again really lightly and I should be able to sand that right off so I'm not gonna worry about stuff like that. I'm looking for divots more than anything. There's some right here, some more of those. There's two right here, right in the middle. This right here is a screw hole that I sanded a little bit too much. So I'll hit that. This looks really good. I've surprised myself. I'm gonna use Easy Sand 5 to do these patches. I don't need a ton, so I'm just gonna mix it on this cardboard. This stuff sets up in about five minutes. That's why I marked everything first, and I'm only gonna mix up what I think I need. I'm just gonna grab some like this, and what you'll notice is this is pretty much the same color as Joint Compound and even the color of that primer. So, in order to be able to find my patches, I'm gonna add some blue chalk to this, and that way it'll stick out so I'll know where I need to sand. I'll try not to make a mess. Try. Also, I use blue chalk because it doesn't show through the paint like other like red or black can show through the paint I'll just mix this up good mix it up quick okay that's it like I said Go as crazy as you want, but that's all I needed. So it's been about 20 minutes and these are ready to sand. So take my 220, just give it a quick little sand. Now I wanna very quickly and carefully sand this entire thing with my pole sander. I just don't wanna accidentally flip it and make a gouge and have to do another patch. I'll show you a quick example right here without putting it on the pole. This little piece that I was telling you about, it's gonna take care of stuff like that and overall make this entire thing smooth. So if I take this and show you, just a couple passes and that is all smooth. So I'm gonna do that for this entire thing. Thank you. 
All right, it is time to paint. I'm gonna start with the ceilings. I'm gonna consider this a ceiling and this a ceiling. So I'm gonna do this and that flat white. I'll do these sides, the wall color. Um, here's a little tip for you. If you don't buy the most ridiculously expensive rollers, they're always gonna have some fuzzies that sometimes come off in the paint. And what I like to do, you can use painter's tape, um, but this duct tape isn't actually great duct tape, so it's not gonna stick really good to this, but it will stick enough to pull up these fuzzies. Just kinda press that in, and then as I peel this away, you'll be able to see on here, there's some hair, some fuzzies, and that way they stick to the tape and not to the wall as you're painting. I'm not gonna bore you with the details of painting. I'm not great at it, so you don't want my advice anyways. Just put the paint on the wall and on the ceiling. Okay, my one and only tip. I do the ceiling first, and then I purposely get some of the ceiling paint on the wall, right just in this corner. That way, it makes it easier to cut in afterwards because it kind of fills in and makes a nice straight edge. That's what I've found anyways. As long as you clean it up and make it nice, kind of like that. Okay, ceiling's all set. We can put our light back up here. I love these lights. Low profile Halo. Video is not sponsored by Halo. But I love these lights. Now we can do the wall color. Oh, I have the size roller that I like to use. This is 3 8 And I'm gonna do my little get the fuzzies off of it trick. All of these rollers, no matter what the price, tend to uh, advertise shed free. Um, so I don't know what to go with without well, just buying the most expensive one and hoping for the best. But this usually does the trick. So I'm using some Benjamin Moore paint. This is actually leftover from this wall in the kitchen. I have about a half a gallon. I'm not sure if it's gonna cover. I hope it will so I don't have to buy another gallon, but I think it's gonna be close. We'll see. It's called Iced Cube Silver. So again, not gonna bore you with a bunch of details about painting, but I will say that the more expensive paint does matter. I don't know about rollers, but I think I'm done buying cheap paint. So this stuff is really nice paint. Now I just hope I have enough. I'm gonna paint this floor the same color. I like to cut in one wall at a time and then roll it before I move on to the next wall. The goal is to try and keep the paint wet the entire wall so it blends and you don't have flashing. That's going to be hard to do if I have to keep taking this pole off. So if I did like the rest of this wall and did this last, and the paint started drying up, this might flash where it would have a different sheen to it. Like this is an eggshell. It might have like more flat in some spots. Not that it really matters on this wall because there's gonna be um, shelving and a bunch of stuff covering this all up, but I'm also not doing a back. So you're gonna see the paint, but rather try and do it the right way. I should be able to use the rolling pole for the rest of this. Now well, I have run out of paint um, as far as 
being able to roll. I'm gonna try and brush the rest of this. And then on my second coat, I'll use the roller and that will give it the same texture as everything else. Right now, wrap that up and then just use this. Actually didn't come out too bad. Mm. Mm. Second coat, same thing. This paint was not $50. This paint for a gallon was $70. A pretty expensive can of paint, but it's worth it. It's worth it to get good paint. So we're all sanded out, primed, patched, two coats of ceiling paint, two coats of wall paint, and I think it came out really good. It's only one thing left to do. Put shelves in here and fill it up with stuff. <laughs> but that's for the next video. If you want to see that one, it might already be out, depending on when you watch this. It will pop up somewhere at the end. And if you want to watch any of my other videos, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. All right. Oh, you're filming already. <laughs> this is a fast setting. Um, <laughs> easy. That's why I love this Easy Send 5. Can you see that side? Same thing. I always like to do a second coat because. <sighs> Yet another tip. A big. <laughs> Oh, the weather outside is frightful. The bar is so delightful. Since we know a place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Merry Christmas! <laughs> it can even take away some of these paintbrush, paintbrush strokes. Never mind. <laughs> right, Lauren? Right. I'll make them dizzy, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren. You are going to make everyone sick. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing what it looks like. <laughs> Yuckas. It's gonna be a close one, close one, close one. Gonna be really close. If I wanna do a second coat on this, I need another gallon. That's unfortunate, but oh well. I was really hoping to cheap out on this one. Girl, the Santa smells so fine. <laughs> oh my God. I got them all today. I got them all. Did I get you? A little bit. <laughs> uh. That's pretty gross, huh? Yeah! Hey, little lost paper towel. Want to come with me? Sure. You don't want anybody missing the sound of me being an idiot. I know you can't see this. I don't care. I don't care if you can see this or not. Coat of hair not included. Oh, good. I hit the frickin' side already. Don't show that corner. Smooth. 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 This is a pretty thick roller. Did I get this for something else? For a rough surface? I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember what I got this for. Definitely, I forgot what I bought half inch roller for. What the hell project was I doing? It would have been like cement. Oh. Oh. I'm okay. <laughs> Go all the way up and all the way down, Lauren. Take two out. There's a bed. <laughs> I'm done. I'm using the cheap tape this this time because I got yelled at by you guys. Don't use the green tape. That's so expensive. You just use like forty dollars in green tape. So there you go. Don't you remember you told me you loved me, baby? Da 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 da. Baby, 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 oh, baby. Best singing you've ever heard in your life. Oh, man, that's going all over the house. 
I hope this is the last time I have to do this in this house. I saw Ricotta. The sides, the wall color, just nick that. Frank, fingernail. What's the origin of that name? Is it French, Italian? I don't know. My father thought of it while shaving. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> Get it, Lauren? I do. Nick! <laughs> Sorry, we were close up. We didn't get that beautiful face. I said, hmm! Didn't come out too bad! Hmm! There, was that good? Was that a good reenactment? That was great. Thank you so much. You know, truth is, I probably could have cut this piece off, but I have no idea how the structure is underneath it. Like, this little bit, is it helping? I don't know been there for so long that I ain't gonna touch it. You can put little trinkets on it. It'd be awesome if I just disappeared out of this shot. The stairs collapsed. <laughs> yeah, so far. No, it wouldn't be awesome. Well, whatever. I'd love to call your wife and tell her. I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy about it, but the shot might be cool. Yeah, not all the paint on me. Oh, that's what you're worried about? Yeah. Not just your back. <laughs> Do you fall through the stairs today? <laughs> <laughs> the stairs are broken. There's paint everywhere. <laughs> uh, I am gonna get in so much trouble. Oh, that's great. Did you do drywall today? There's white all over the floor. Did you paint today? There's paint on the floor. <laughs>